Hello everyone, Pulse here and welcome to what is going to be the start of our massive BlizzCon 2013 content. Now in this first video, we're just going to do an overview as to all of the different info that came out. Not going to be very detailed, this is going to be a vague overview and then we will actually go into some more detail oriented discussions in different videos that come in the future. But let's get into what was at the con in terms of games. To start, we had the official reveal of WoW's fifth expansion, Warlords of Draenor, as we all came to expect with the trademark uh, reveal a couple weeks ago. Now, some of the highlights that came from the reveal was the mention of WoW's sort of take on player housing, the garrison system. We have the updated models for all of the races that came into the game prior to Wrath of the Lich King, so all of the vanilla races and then Blood Elf and Draenor are supposed to get updates in terms of the model. Um, they have mentioned that Blood Elves and Draenei may not make it in, in time for the actual release of the expansion, but they did say they are absolutely working on them right now. And then the other big thing that I took away was the changes to the rating tier system and, and how they've kind of changed around normal and flex and then they added in another one called mystic um, there's honestly a lot to talk about with the expansion and as i kind of mentioned stay tuned to the channel for a lot more in-depth discussion about all of the different parts uh, i'm probably not going to do one big wow expansion talk because it's just so much i could get into so expect a, a lot more little videos uh, talking about rulers of draenor now next up was the Heroes of the Storm and its pretty hefty presence at BlizzCon. Uh, to start, the game was introduced to us with a really fantastic and action-packed uh, CGI trailer, which in normal Blizzard cinematic fashion was just over the top and really, really well done. Big thumbs up to the Blizzard cinematic team. As always, they just they deliver some of the best trailers ever, really. They're just ludicrously good, so have to give props to those guys. Now besides this, this really, really good trailer, we got some snippets of gameplay um, for us that were not able to attend the, the con, but uh, more importantly is that a lot of people that were there got a chance to actually play the game for a good amount of time, and they've gotten their impressions now, their takeaways from the experience, and we'll dissect uh, what everyone thought about the game in an upcoming video, but the main takeaway from what uh, I've been reading and looking at was that Heroes of the Storm is indeed a more streamlined and I suppose we could label it as a dumbed down MOBA experience as a lot of us kind of predicted as I predicted, but it plays really well from what they've said and Blizzard has apparently done some pretty interesting things with the Heroes abilities and the, the maps and the variety in terms of what you actually do on the maps. They're not all three lane uh, typical MOBA maps. There are some different um, characteristics and objectives that you can do in the actual map. So that's pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to giving the game a go, especially since beta it did come up. You are now able to uh, apply for the beta. Hopefully I get in. If I do, uh, somebody was asking me earlier if I would do coverage on the game. More than likely, yes. If I get a beta key and I'm able to get into the game, I will more than likely cover that game for you guys. Now beyond these two kind of show stealing titles we also had some hearthstone pre presence with the tournament that was there obviously they had a tournament for prevalent youtubers and streamers there but uh, the big thing was that they announced open beta is to come to us really really soon in in just a couple weeks really in early december sometime i'm really looking forward to that i'm i'm not really sure how it's going to hold up to be completely honest because it's one of those really overhyped games mainly because we've had a lot of time to see it and it's actually fun to watch it has a potential esport quality going on there but it's one of those things where i don't know if it's going to live long outside of this limited space where not so many people can play it but a lot of people can watch it so we'll see because it's it's not an amazingly complicated ccg i do want to get my hands on it as i said and uh, potentially there will be some coverage on the game on the channel if uh, if enough people want to see me do that um, we'll just have to see how it fares after this initial hype train kind of slows down a bit with the open beta release now in addition to those games we had some diablo 3 expansion detailings, mainly showing off the Reaper of Souls new adventure mode, which looks to be kind of a farmer's dream of sorts. Uh, when I was reading up the details on this mode, uh, it looks to be that adventure mode is supposed to be uh, almost like this revert to maybe an old school top-down action oriented 
RPG with buddies maybe is kind of the appeal. That's what I was looking into it, and that's kind of what I thought I would be able to do with it, is you'd get your buddies, and the story becomes kind of this 100% irrelevant thing. So instead of having you run through the story mode over and over again, you just go into adventure mode. There is no story, and it then becomes what games were when you used to sit in your living room and play with your buddies, and it became all about the, the carnage and what your friends could accomplish with their favorite heroes and their favorite characters just running through and killing everything and having a good laugh and a good fun. Adventure mode looks like it could provide that uh, perfect space for the small group uh, style of experience where you just run through and cause tons of havoc and just have tons of fun, which is what games are about after all. Um, the big things about adventure mode that it's doing to maybe facilitate this is that it's making travel much more easier. They are removing the story, as I kind of mentioned. The monsters are going to have a lot more added to them in terms of numbers available on screen that you'll have to deal with and potentially other mechanics. But uh, they also have the bounty system, which is kind of like you go out and, as you would expect, you go after your bounty and you get some rewards. It's kind of like a questing system, I suppose, but not quite so restrictive. And then we also have the Nephilim Rifts which are kind of like their dynamic events, I suppose. It all looks a, like a lot of fun, honestly, but I'm not really sure if these mechanics are going to attract me back to play some more Diablo 3. It's not the worst game, absolutely not the worst game like some people like to claim it is, but there were some pretty hefty blunders that we can't really ignore with the original, and to be completely honest, even when I ignored the stupid implementation, such as the auction house, it just wasn't that fun of a game. It just, it really wasn't. Luckily though, I do have to keep kind of positive with this in that they don't have an auction house to deal with anymore, and hopefully that means they put their heads back into the actual game development and the fun experience development instead of using their time and money to create a, a revenue maker that was like the auction house. Hopefully they've gone back and, and learned the error of their ways and, and decided to implement more fun experiences, which it looks like they're doing with adventure mode and such. Now finally, I want to mention Titan mainly because it didn't have any official title change to like the Dark Below like some people were saying. It didn't really have a reveal, it didn't have any presence at all. However, there have been some interviews conducted during BlizzCon which tell us that Titan is on its way into what I would call like the long haul of development where they've changed the underbelly and the core game mechanics and the pillars of the game itself They've all changed that very drastically, as we should have expected, honestly, when they told us that uh, they needed to rethink their design path with the game and chunked a huge amount of, amount of it out the window. Obviously, it's not a lot to go on, but I did want to mention it since Titan is this thing that we've just known about since, I believe, 2007 or so, and I know a lot of Blizzard fans and gamers in general are really looking forward to kind of the next big thing from this studio and what they are going to bring to the table with their next colossal title. So if you're worried about Titan maybe just getting completely axed, it's still there, guys. Don't worry. They, they are working on it. It will be coming to us in the future, and hopefully we hear about it sometime before this time next year. Uh, I would hope we don't have to wait for a BlizzCon to hear anything else about the title. But you never know, it could be next year's big thing. But uh, you know what, guys? I think that's going to do it for me. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want more BlizzCon discussion, don't you worry. There's tons more on the way with much more detail-oriented content going up on the channel as soon as I can upload it, honestly. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to see the channel continue growing, by all means, hit that thumbs up and subscribe button down at the bottom there. And also make sure to share with your friends and leave a comment down below on anything discussed in this video or gaming in general. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.